Okay, in this video we look at how the local equilibrium assumption that production of turbulence is equal to dissipation of turbulence can be used to provide an approximation uh, for the so the Boost and S relationship but also the constant 0 0.09 using experimental data and then we're going to look at how you can then eliminate the need for having K and epsilon there uh, so that you get something which is entirely independent of the, uh, the turbulence quantities K and epsilon which is known as the mixing link model. Okay. So the first step then, we look at this, and we recall that the Reynolds stress is equal to the turbulent eddy viscosity times by the strain rate. And at this stage, we're only looking at one velocity gradient, du dy, which is the velocity gradient that is um, dominating, or the only velocity gradient in a boundary layer. So uh, x is the streamwise direction, y is the wall normal direction, this is your wall, this is your boundary layer, and this is the only non-zero velocity gradient. And so in order to approximate the Reynolds shear stress uv, we need to know nu t, the eddy viscosity. And nu t, um, as we calculated at the end of the, the third set of notes, is equal to the constant c mu times k squared over epsilon, which has the correct uh, dimensions of uh, this kinematic viscosity. But the problem is we don't know this constant c mu and so in order to calculate that we have to make some assumptions and the starting point for these assumptions is that we have a state of turbulence equilibrium that is the production is equal to the dissipation. And if we consider this in terms of our energy spectrum then we can see that the production, the amount of energy coming from the mean flow for the turbulence should be equal to the dissipation, the amount of energy going from the turbulence to heat or internal energy. And in that situation, we can, we can, we can start the, the process of approximating C mu. And so we start by saying PK, which is equal exactly to UV times by du dy, is equal to dissipation epsilon. And the next step is that we multiply through the equation by this quantity here, which is just used for convenience, and we, we get this. And this is useful because there's a direct mapping of the terms. So here we have minus uv is equal to k squared over epsilon times by du dy. And then the constant c mu can then be somehow linked to the quantity uv over k all squared. And so really what we do then is we use experimental data uh, of a channel flow and of a boundary layer and we compute this quantity, uv over k all squared, which we can get from um, turbulent statistics. And we find that over quite a large portion of the, uh, the channel flow or the, or the boundary layer, it has a constant value. And moreover, we can work out what this constant value is. We can see that here... It's more or less 0 0.09 here. It's slightly lower, possibly 0 0.07. But this allows us to, to calibrate our model. And in this way, the standard uh, term, the standard value for CMU that's used most of the time in turbulence modeling is found to be 0 0.09. But what happens if we don't want to have to calculate K and Epsilon? Because at the moment we have what we'd, we we would need a two equation model uh, to compute an approximation for k and epsilon. If we can't do that, then we have to think of an alternative method, and this is what motivates us to develop the mixing layer model. So remember that with uh, eddy viscosity, you're approximating the dimensions uh, so that you get something which is dimensionally consistent with uh, turbulent viscosity nu t. Uh, that has basically the dimensions of a velocity scale times by a length scale and in the k epsilon model we decide we're going to have our velocity scale to be k to the half and our length scale to be k to three halves over epsilon and if you combine that this is where you get your expression of nu t is equal to c mu times k squared over epsilon but what happens if we want to eliminate k and epsilon and so we go back to the starting point and we want to come up with a different route to approximate it 
Well, the starting point is, again, that you assume the flow to be in local equilibrium. So pK is equal to minus uv times du dy is equal to epsilon. As such, so we just substitute our um, eddy viscosity model, c mu ut times our strain rate, the dy, into this expression. As follows, and then we can further simplify uh, by introducing the definition of the velocity scale ut equal to square root of k, and remove epsilon by using the definition for the length scale, as follows. So we rearranged this <clears throat> to make either subject and then substituted in k3 halves over lt. And we made a direct substitution here to have k to the half. And then this can be tidied up further to give us um, something where k is the subject. As follows. So we can get k, k to the half is equal to c mu to the half times lt times du dy. And then, of course, k to the half is the velocity scale. So then we're right back at the beginning we've come up with a way to eliminate k from the uh, approximation of a velocity scale. And we've also eliminated epsilon, we can use lt directly, so our new expression for nu t is, from here is nu t is equal to c mu times c mu to the half lt du dy, which is ut, times lt. And this, again, can be simplified. And so here we have uh, put a modulus around the du dy because we obtained it by taking the square root of this term, so it's going to be positive bound. Uh, and we can finally make a, a further substitution of this. So these two terms um, can be simplified by defining Lm, which is a mixing length, and a manually prescribed length over which the turbulent mixing occurs, and this is equal to a constant, so c mu to the three quarters times by uh, the turbulent integral length scale. And then finally, we have then our expression for the mixing length model, which allows us to approximate the turbulent eddy viscosity nu t as a function of this mixing length squared times by the, uh, the velocity gradient du dy. And this is the mixing length model.